Dr. Bilski, we're talking about smile makeovers. Veneers are one way to do it, but dental implants are another. Are they better? Are they worse? What are dental implants? How do they help make my smile, refresh my smile? So to specifically answer those questions, you, you stated the veneers, 100% one way to do it, provided that your jawbone, your gums, and your bite are healthy. It's gotta be all perfect. Yeah, okay. and, and if you need a little help, there are some things that we do to, to get you that point. When we're talking specifically about dental implant makeovers, typically the teeth are, the lack of a better term, shot. They're, they're terminal. Okay. So if you have a terminal smile or a portion of your smile, what is the optimum way to make it look pretty, but stable, easy for you to take care of, minimize the amount of effort you have to, to go through and what yeah. I have to do, yeah. and does it fit the budget? So are dental implants better than your natural teeth? That is if your natural teeth have, have said goodbye to you. And we have the foundation, the jawbone, to support the dental implants. And then with our technologies that we're doing, balanced bites. And back in the day, it used to be form over function, meaning we, uh, or excuse me, function over form. We wanna make sure that the bite is there and you could chew and you could speak. And then whatever it looked like, you just kind of had to deal with it. Now with the materials that we have yeah. available and the the imaging with digital x-rays and virtual they, stuff. They've got all sorts of wonderful equipment, crazy stuff yeah. like Star Wars, it, Star Trek type stuff. It's 100% stuff you guys have. Star Wars. Uh, someday I always say when I retire, they'll figure it out and you just walk <laughs> through a booth and your, your teeth <laughs> are done. They'll just do the thing like exactly. this. Yeah, right, yeah. But um, it's just kind of amazing what we can do. So not only does it have to work with function, yeah in the form of it, but it, it needs to look pretty. Also, there are some limitations with that too. You know, realistically, you know, can we make them look exactly like your teeth did when you were 20? Because a lot of times we get that, I'm in my 60s now and I get my comrades that come in and they bring me their high school or their college yearbook and I <laughs> see that, I had a great smile. I totally get it. Hey, by the way, you've lost all this bone, that foundation that you had 40 years ago, 50 years ago. Um, Sometimes you can't go back. We, we, can get, we can get you, you get better nice. than what you have. Cleansable, functioning, speaking well. Sometimes a lot of effort. Sometimes it goes swimmingly very well. Yeah. But it's all in the evaluation and having your expectations met to what's available for your smile so that you can eat and chew. But so much is possible that you can do. There's, there, there's a lot where it would be hopeless before we take your teeth out, give you dentures. And um, statement in our practice is dentures are not a replacement for your teeth. Mm, it, they are replacements for not having your teeth. So at best, what we can do is make you miserable. <laughs> that's, that's not a great tagline. I, I it, love it. <laughs> but it, it does, it does kind of like level the playing field yeah, right here. And, like, yeah. and you're like, what do you mean I'm gonna be miserable? Like, well, this is what our patients have experienced over the 37 years that I've been working with them. Dentures are great. They are great. Some of, some of my patients absolutely love them. And then we have those that just can't function with them. It's just either psychological or sometimes it's a little bit too much in their mouth. They have a gag reflex. And then the only options you have are to move forward with the dental implants or we have some that have chosen to go toothless. Is that the new thing? It's not the new thing, but it is a thing. Well, you don't, you probably don't want that one. So remember the dental implants can solve a lot for you. Huh? Certainly can. So come on and get your options. And, and it's not always dental implants. So we're not pushing that. But if there are no other alternatives, we certainly give you multiple options without confusing you. And typically what I do is I give you what I feel would be the best for you if you were my brother or a family member, a close friend, and then what the secondary option would be. And then there, there's a discussion based on that. And probably the best thing to do is always step back, maybe get a second opinion or a third opinion and, and really get a perspective. And what it comes down to is the relationship that you would have uh, with me and my practice. Like, you know, do you, do you like what we're saying and how we handle ourselves? Um, are we empathetic to some of the things that we know you're going to go through? Mm -hmm. But also we have to be fair and firm on some of the other things too. So um, it's, it's really patient specific in, in the interaction with the relationship. But come on in, take a, come on. let them take a look. Yeah.